Welcome back to the channel everybody, and I know I'm not alone in this, but ever since Cold War came out, and hell, even Modern Warfare, I have been begging for a lever action shotgun, and season after season we have been disappointed until today, because ladies and gentlemen, we have the 410 lever action shotgun. It's an honest to god shotgun, not a pistol like the Marshall, and it's not a rifle, it's a shotgun. And with it comes some really cool features that make it pretty unique compared to the other shotguns and also some downsides. And the biggest downside is really that the SAS combat stock is actually the no stock attachment. So the best stock being no stock usually isn't actually a sawed off stock because it seems like it got switched around and looks different. And this hurts my soul because having no stock on a lever action shotgun takes me back to Modern Warfare 3 and 2 and I really want that look. But they'll probably fix that soon, right? But anyway, let's get into the gun itself and all of its glory. The first thing I want to mention is that the lever action shotgun is the first of its kind for buckshot in that in its max damage range, it has the highest damage compared to the other shotguns. The damage this bad boy can do up close with a headshot is around 210 to 212 points of damage, and it tends to vary slightly, I think because of some weird helmet multiplier or something, but this means that the gun has a headshot multiplier that is larger than the other shotguns. It's not by much, usually it's like 204 or 208 damage for the other shotguns, and this should help a tiny bit more at longer ranges. Stomach shots will usually deal around 204, which is the same as the others though. The initial damage range is pretty small. It's like the 725, which is really similar damage and range wise, and it only goes up to about two and a half meters. After that, things get a little weird and up to about 8.6 meters or so, you can two tap players. This is the largest base two shot kill range of the buckshot shotguns. No dragon's breath, no slugs. The 725 was this shotgun up to about 8.1 meters, but now this is the go-to for that. But there's a giant catch for this. You are only gonna get a two shot kill at this range only if you are hitting upper chest and higher. Chest itself and stomach shots are not going to cut it, unlike the 725, which you can hit stomach shots and still get the two shot. Thankfully, we have a nice mechanic with this shotgun where aiming down sights with the base gun turns it basically into the Argus from Black Ops 3 where hit fire is wide, but aiming down sights essentially makes a slug or a super tight spread more than any of the other shotguns. Of course, further out, this spread does get a little bit wider, but that is really the secret here. You have to be super accurate with your shots to get that two shot consistently. And for most players, it's gonna be really, really hard to do that. You are basically required to hit upper chest and up to get any worthwhile trade off for that damage range. So let me tell you, this shotgun is not for the faint of heart. If you can aim well and maneuver well, it'll be fun and it'll be a blast and it'll be good, but if you're a hip fire kind of guy, this gun will absolutely destroy your soul. It's hard and hopefully people will realize shotguns are pretty high skill sometimes. I don't really care too much about that in itself, but I couldn't help but think when I was using this, like, man, this is really kind of hard and I can't believe someone out there still probably thinks this is really easy and certainly easier than an SMG, I mean, come on. Sadly, we don't get any cool attachments like the Cold War counterpart, but the standard Cold War shotgun attachments still apply for Warzone at least. The reinforced heavy barrel gives us that 11% damage range increase and the task force is at about 20%. So the task force is still the barrel I usually recommend for this gun. It'll take your two shot range up to about 10.4 meters or so. And then you add a laser to that and it can go up to about 11, depending if you use the Ember sighting point or the SOF target designator, but we'll get back to that in a second. The Ember is more about 11.5 meters or so, and the SOF is basically at around 11 meters, so that's a pretty disgusting two-shot range for a buckshot gun. You may be wondering though, what about the fire rate increase? Is there really any good increase with that? Well, this leads me to my other complaint for this gun, and that's the fire rate. Much like the Hauer, it's in this weird spot where you have to time and shoot so perfectly to get that faster follow-up that more often than not, you oversample or shoot slower than you actually could. The animation seems to be done, but you can't fire another shot, and it leads to some weird hiccup moments that really get me killed a lot. This could just be a subjective thing, but it's the same thing with the Hauer, where the fire rate can be so good if you're really, really focused on that sweet spot for it, but it is so much more specific of a sweet spot than with the other shotguns. Honestly, it's kind of annoying, but the reinforced heavy barrel and the hammer forge barrels don't really help much with the rate of fire. The base rate of fire is around 78 rounds per minute, so it's faster than the 680, but it's also slower than the Hauer. The fire rate barrels, really, I can't find any significant change to the fire rate. 
It may be coded to help by like, I don't know, one to 5% for all I know, but I can't really measure it super accurately. And at the end of the day, you're not gonna get anything faster than that 78 rounds per minute realistically. In Cold War, I think the grips help with your rate of fire or something for this gun, but they don't seem to do that in Warzone, so screw me, I guess. So because of that fire rate of about 78 rounds per minute, it's gonna be a slow time to kill. And the two shot time to kill you're looking at is around 769 milliseconds or so, depending if the RPM is just a few bits higher or lower. And that is pretty slow. It's not as slow as the Model 680, but it's still pretty slow. And this is a marksman rifle shotgun. You're not gonna be getting insane times to kill and you have to play to the strength of this weapon, which is using cover and making these two shots count with accuracy, meaning you have to hit head and upper chest. Otherwise, this thing is gonna be pretty useless because the spread is so tight, you can challenge people in the three shot kill ranges more effectively and it is pretty satisfying to do that, more so than with the other shotguns, but again, you just have to be so accurate. It's a challenge to do and doing it in plunder is one thing, but making your loadout have this as a primary and risking it all with it is really challenging to do in a actual battle royale match. A lot of the attachments aren't anything special. So what your Hauer class looks like is probably gonna be what this class looks like as well. For my ideal build, it's usually focused on range primarily, but with a little bit of some other stuff too. So I use a Task Force Barrel because it gives you the most range. It's about 20% more range with the other shotguns as well. The no stock attachments, of course, for the sprint to fire speed. And now I use the seven round mag because seven is plenty. And even though you have eight, you can top off that one shell. And the eight round mag is gonna hurt your aim down sight speed slightly whereas the seven round doesn't and it's not really that much of a great trade-off which considering this is an aim down sight shotgun you want to have that fast aim down sight speed which by the way it is pretty fast out of the box it's around 250 milliseconds compared to the gallo which is more like 333 milliseconds at 60 fps this aims pretty fast so some aim down sights hurting attachments won't be too bad but the eight round mag is a slight bit overkill in my book and there's really no need for it then i use the sof target designator which is contentious because lots of people swear by the ember sighting point for shotguns but even though you aren't getting as much range only about six percent or so compared to the embers 11 you aren't hurting your aim down sights or your sprint to fire speed with the sof target designator the choice is yours but i think that the gun has enough range already so i go for a little bit better mobility at the cost of slightly less range at least for the lasers now for the fifth attachment it's really anything goes in my book some people might want a sight and i understand why because it's so tight when you aim down sights. Some people might want a suppressor, but it's up to you. I would say that the agency choke is always a good choice for these shotguns, but it does hurt your range by about 5%. Again, not really mentioned in the game. It says it helps range, but it doesn't. And it hurts aim down sight speed slightly. Or you could use the flash cone, which is also nice, or maybe one of the first grips for aim down sight speed. I just wouldn't recommend one of the last ones that hurt your sprint to fire speed, like the airborne elastic wrap, since that's always important for shotguns. The duckbill choke does what it usually does. It's a slightly wider spread, but not by much. It's fine. It's not really an amazing attachment, but it does work to a small degree. It's debatable if it's really even good at all, since a wider spread isn't that much wider. The choke, it does nothing, and you don't need it for this gun because it's already super tight. Sound suppressor hurts range by more than the agency choke by about 12% but it does help you with your sprint to fire speed and your aim down sight speed by about a frame or so generally. So there's a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to choosing this last attachment. Now, overall, is this shotgun worth it? As much as it pains me to say, I think there are still some better options for legitimate shotgun playing. One of the best things about this gun is that you can challenge people at ranges more effectively than ever because of that spread. And if you're a good shot with the spread, it's working with you and not against you in this case. So three shot kills are possible at pretty decent ranges. And that's an awesome plus. It's really, really good at those ranges. But for the good two shots, the Model 680 with Dragon's Breath is still unbelievably good. And it's more forgiving because you don't need to hit upper chest and up. It's just stomach and up, really. The VLK Rogue, of course, has a great rate of fire and slightly less range. But at shotgun range, it's amazing. And the 410 is just really difficult to use very well. And if the two shot was stomach and up, I'd be more inclined to use it. But as it stands, the risk is really, really high for this gun. And though the range is amazing, the best in class really, it's not an easy gun to use. And the other shotguns, though they aren't easy by any means, are less difficult to manage than this particular one. But this is a lever action and it's fun when it works. And there's something to be said for that because I still plan on trying to master this gun as much as I can because I just miss using lever actions and it does bring a smile to my face 
And in the end, that's what using these guns is all about. It's about fun and a good challenge, so go for it. And that is just about gonna do it for this video, guys. Give the shotgun a try. It can be really strong in the right hands, don't get me wrong, but be prepared for a little bit of a learning curve and it's gonna take some time getting used to. So give it a shot. Let me know what you think of it. Do you think it could use more range? Do you think it's a little too strong currently? I think it's in a pretty good spot. It's definitely a very high risk, high reward type of gun. And let's be real, it's a primary. It's not a secondary like in Cold War. So it balances out in that way. And you're already gonna see some streamers and people call it broken, but I think they're more broken than the gun itself because they just know how to use the gun so well. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of this gun in particular. And with all that being said, I will see you in the next video.